Hello and welcome back to a very wintry automotive tales. So on today's episode, I'm going to try and sort the brakes on this Land Rover. Now is as good a time as any to show you what I've bought. I've bought a Land Rover and you'll notice it's at the side of the road because it's already broken down. Luckily, this bit's working fine. Nice twin Solex carburetors, new airbox. All of this has been changed over from the earlier EFI because it wasn't running right. But uh, my brakes appear to be seized, even though we've had a new master cylinder. So um, who knows what is going on? But I can definitely confirm I'm an idiot. By adjusting the linkage that goes between the pedal and the vacuum servo under the bonnet. However, to do that, I'm gonna to have to move it away from the shed. So I've tucked it right over on my driveway to allow space for people to walk past, and I've got it too close to the shed. So despite the fact it's been snowing this morning uh, and there's still ice everywhere, I'm gonna to have to try and start this car and move it. So we're effectively gonna do a cold start on the Land Rover. Now I know there are plenty of people out there that really like a cold start video, so I'm also probably gonna format this as just a cold start video as well as doing the brakes. So. I'm probably just going to recycle some footage. Uh, right, now uh, on to getting this off, the crook lock, and, uh, and get it started. How hard can it be? I mean, it's only a, you know, 3.9 V8 on twin carburetors and zero degrees. I mean, it'll start on the bottom, right? Right, so first things first. Uh, off with the security device. And... Get the key in, and before we do any of that, put the battery back on. Okay is on. Let's see how we get on. Put the pedal on to twice. Spinning over. I suspect it's been sat for a week so carburetors are probably pretty empty. Get the float chambers nice and full. I can hear the fuel pump going so let's try again. I know it's cold, but come on. Okay. Third time lucky, see if we get any life in it. It's definitely in the park. Okay, chokes out. Now we should get a life. Running on about two cylinders. And that sounds like about six or seven. <laughs> that sounds like about eight. Slightly squeezy belt. Running this camera is slowly working its way across the screen. Right, into reverse, but that's a hell fire. Yeah, there's no problems there with some power. Right, 
I'd let it to run for a second or two, get the engine a little bit warm, which means while I'm working on the brakes, the fingers will go. Okay, so I suspect the rod is within this box here at the back of the vacuum servo. Interestingly, you can see the VIN plate here. Uh, so there's four bolts at the back of here, which I believe are half inch. So uh, I'm going to use a 13 because nothing else I have really is Imperial apart from maybe the, uh, the Rolls-Royce. And the Rolls-Royce is not something I'm often working on myself. Ooh. So I did spray a bit of lubricant on these and penetrating oil the other day. So they should come loose. Very nice. Right, well, this is going to take some time, so uh, maybe some gratuitous time lapse. an oily and rusty difficult one to get off but he came off so more gratuitous time lapse we keep going on the other side Cylinder now, which is good. Apart from, if I think I want to remove it, I'm going to have to take the expansion bottle off. So, um, more gratuitous time-lapse. So, since the last bit of gratuitous time-lapse, I have reassembled all of this. You see it's all nice and tight. Uh, the main reason being is because there's actually a pin in here. My hope was to get this loose, then pop the pin out. However, the pin was a little bit crusty, so it wouldn't move without everything relocated back in position. So, bolted this back on, sturdied it all up. Luckily, the threads now have cleaned up, so getting these bolts on and off isn't too difficult. Um, it was a good opportunity to put a bit more lubricant on them and a bit more anti-seize on them. Uh, and now... I've managed to hammer that pin out, which was not easy because the pin had been put in that way, which meant that the little split pin, this horrible little fella here, was pushed through that, but on that side, there's a hole just about there where my hand now is, which you can get in. The size of the hole is the size of this little blanking plug here. And I had to squeeze the split pin in that hole from that side. And I tried a number of things. So you can see there's some nice padding on top of the engine. At one point, I was laid on top of the engine trying to get into that crevice. And I tried a number of different things. And eventually, a bit of brute force, a hammer and a screwdriver was the key to the job. So I have now got that split pin out. I have now just got this, uh, this other pin, the main pin, out. My hope is that I can now take this back off again. And once I've got this off, I should be able to adjust the bar that's behind it and then put it all back together. And then probably put this pin in from the other side so that I can then see what I'm doing with the split pin. And wherever I have to take it off next time, probably Muggins here, we'll be able to get that split pin a bit easier. So, uh, here we go again. successfully got the master cylinder out only for this not to be an adjustable one that's really not very useful so this might be part of the reason if this isn't exactly the right part and exactly the right length it means that wherever the stop is on the pedal it's always leaning on this and it's always pushing a small amount of brake efficiency on 
Um, but now I don't know what to do because I can't adjust it. So how do I stop this happening is the question. Um, my first thought was maybe to slot this a little bit and add a bit of slack into the system. That might be a useful temporary fix. Um, otherwise, maybe look to see if there's a bump stop for the pedal, but I don't think there is. Um, hmm. Yeah, don't know. I'm presuming you can get a master cylinder that has an adjuster on, because I've seen them before where there's a little nut on here and you can adjust the length of this shaft slightly. And the idea is it needs to be ever so slightly longer so that the pedal is not sitting on its bump stop when it's slightly pushing on here. <sighs> right, I'm gonna try the temporary fix, drill that hole a little bit bigger, maybe I can slot it slightly. Well, it is all back together. Uh, I may have got distracted by the fact that it's freezing cold out here and not put the camera on, so you won't have seen all of that, but um, tank's back in, had to get that out of the way to manoeuvre some of this. Um, got the pin back in, got the little plastic cover over, which is quite often missing on these, lets lots of cold air go into the uh, footwell. I actually only have one cover, and I've stolen it from that side because I don't mind the warm air coming into the cabin from the engine. Anywho, uh, I did drill out the hole through the little bracket in the master cylinder so we'll see whether that makes any difference i'm going to get the car started again and go for a little buzz around um but probably not too far because there is no heating in this thing and it's brr right time to put the tools away okay first things first let's see if it starts first time <laughs> it's alive uh, right i'm gonna um just wait for the car to warm up and and we're going to go for a little spin. Definitely feels like there's some vacuum assist there, so that's good. One thing I am going to do, if you can hear me over the noisy great big engine, uh, when I first got in the car, that little bit there that says low, neutral and high had popped off. So um, I'm going to pop that back on and just check it's actually in high before we set off. As you can see, the Land Rover has not moved and I'm obviously doing my best Wooliding impression. So it hasn't solved the problem. So back to the drawing board. I'm going to go away and do some research. Uh, my friends at Loughborough Land Rover Club have been very helpful so far. So I'm sure they will give me some guiding light to find what the problem is. In the meantime, I'm going to drink some tea from some of our new Automotive Tales merch, which includes lovely key rings and even these little badges here. I'm going to give a whole load of this stuff away when I get to a thousand subscribers. I'm currently at about 91% of my target. Uh, if you can't work out what that means in terms of subscribers, you need to go and do some math schooling. Um, so yeah, so like, share and subscribe and uh, we'll be back with this rusty old beast very shortly. Bye for now. <laughs>